What makes an automobile an automobile? Well, first of all, it has to be automatically mobile, but it's a little more than that. You also need brakes and steering. The brakes are all working on this car, so now I just need to do one of two things. Either pave a road outside my driveway, through my neighbor's house, around the entire planet, ending at the back of my garage, or add a steering wheel. I've already installed the power steering motor and I made a new steering wheel for a different car, but I bought a new one for this car. I installed the rack a while ago, now I just need to connect the dots. I don't remember if I talked about this rack or not. I got it from eBay for pretty cheap, mostly because I needed some steering to happen when I moved. It's from a BMW Z3, maybe? Z4? I don't know. I just looked at cheap racks until I found one that had the right ratio, the right length, and had mounting holes in a location that I could use. This one worked out well. I have a power system, so I want a quicker ratio than you normally find on non-powered racks. There are expensive solutions out there, but the Junkyard BMW will be excellent for this application. If you remember when I made my custom uprights, I added a removable steering arm thingy. There's a name for this part, but we'll just call it a steering arm thingy. To connect the rack to the steering arm thingies, I quickly tapped some aluminum I had lying around. I don't like aluminum here. It's probably strong enough with the thread engagement I have, but I prefer steel, so I'm remaking these. I got some steel tube and some threaded tube ends, half inch by 20 for the tie rod side and M14 for the steering rack side. That's right, metric and imperial on the same part. Dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria! Between the rack and the powered firewall, I'm gonna use the U-joints that came with my Prius-powered column. Toyota makes some pretty reliable stuff. I don't think these are intended to be used outside of the cabin, so I might swap them out later, but they're probably good enough and I have them, so I'm gonna use them for now. I gave them a nice coat of paint to help prevent corrosion. To connect it to the rack, I needed to buy a spline that fit the BMW rack. This is a 17 millimeter diameter spline with 36 teeth. Weirdly hard to find this part in the US, but there are plenty of 11 16th inch diameter splines with 36 teeth. These are just under half a millimeter too big, but it actually fits pretty snugly. So I bought one of these, welded it on, and added two set screws for extra safety. If you remember my powered steering firewall video, my steering motor is mounted here with this clamp, probably good enough to keep it from rotating, but just to be sure, I had send, cut, send, laser cut me a flange to bolt between the motor and the brake booster. There shouldn't really be any force on this, but it's a nice safety backup, and it was only 30 bucks to have it made. I 3D scanned the area and drew up the design in CAD, then I bent it on my bench vise to get this jog in it. On the other side of the steering is the wheel. I had another flange laser cut by Send, Cut, Send, actually a few flanges. The horn button on this steering wheel sits back and is held in by a spring clip, so I made three flanges with different internal diameters. The first one centers the horn button assembly and has a ledge for the spring clip to hold on to. The second one is a spacer to fit the back part of the horn assembly, and the back flange is what it all mounts to. The front two flanges are welded together and tapped, so the wheel bolts to those. The bolts extend out the back and are held on the back flange with lock nuts. Behind that, we have a one inch steering shaft that goes down about a foot and then changes to a three quarter inch stainless shaft. The steering shaft is held in with these mounted spherical bearings. I bolted in the first one in the same location as the stock steering shaft bearings so that my column will exit the dash in the same place. I drilled through the sides and added another tapped hole to keep them from rotating. To get the right column location, I set the seat in the car and hung the steering wheel in a location that felt right. Then I bolted in the rear bearing based on that steering shaft angle. To keep the shaft from moving in and out, I added some collars on each side of the spherical bearings. The angle of the shaft made them rub on the bearing housing, so I put them in the lathe and chamfered the edges. Now to connect the steering shaft to the input of the powered firewall. When I bought that powered steering column for the Prius, it came with two steering shafts, each with two U-joints. Perfect, since I need two steering shafts with two U-joints. I used one of them on the outside of the firewall. That worked great. I attempted to use the other one between the steering column and the power motor. That did not work great. Here's the problem. There's just not very much space. I had to weld up an adapter on the motor side and the U-joints themselves are quite long. In this configuration, the joints are at a much higher angle than they're designed for. U-joints don't have a consistent turning angle unless they're straight. What this means is that if I turn the steering wheel 10 degrees, the shaft after the U-joint might turn nine degrees or 11 degrees, depending on where it is in its rotation. This gets worse with higher angles. You can reduce this by offsetting two U-joints like I did here in the front, but this only works if both angles are about the same. This one here is about 20 degrees and this one is about 50. 
Also, I didn't bother to clock these two correctly, so they're not doing the canceling, but it doesn't matter because I'm not going to leave this in. This angle is way too high. You can feel it get really hard to turn and then much easier as this joint goes through its rotation. I can fix this in a few different ways. The first is to move the upper pivot further away from the firewall. This reduces both angles, so this is what I did for now. I bought two new U-joints that are much more compact than the Toyota ones. I also inset the splined end into the U-joint and welded it in, so the splines for this connection are actually inside of the sleeve of the joint, bringing it closer to the firewall. I also angled the steering shaft by putting spacers on opposite sides of my two shaft bearings. This puts the wheel a little bit further to the right than I'd like, but it helps the shaft angle a lot. This made everything much nicer, and it works for now. I mentioned that the two front U-joints were phased to cancel out variation in angular velocity. That's not actually true. They have different angles and also different vectors. The input and output are not parallel. In fact, both of the angles are sort of bending the same direction, but not exactly. The ones inside the car are also pretty dissimilar, but more parallel than the outside. Still not parallel, though. I spent about two hours with a spreadsheet trying to calculate the output angles of each successive joint based on its relative relation to its input joint. This was all an attempt to have the variations cancel as much as possible, but then I remembered that math is stupid and I don't care. So it is what it is. It's probably fine. This solution works for now, but it's not ideal. The ideal solution might be to remount the power steering motor at an angle parallel to the line between the steering wheel and the steering rack. This may be the best design, but I'm not going to do it, partly because I've already mounted up everything, but mostly because I came up with a third solution that not only solves the problem, but adds unnecessary complexity. And you know how much I love unnecessary complexity. I'm going to make a steering drop box. You see these on old hot rods sometimes. It takes the steering input and sends it down a foot or so using, I don't know, chains or gears or something. I'm going to make one, but with a unique twist. Check it out. This car originally came with this cool turn signal switch in the center of the steering wheel. You flip the switch left and it turns the left turn signal on. And as you rotate the wheel back right, it auto cancels. Here's the cool thing though. It doesn't rotate with the wheel. The switch is always at the top. They could do this because the steering column is straight all the way from the wheel down to the steering box. Inside the steering shaft, there is a smaller shaft that's constrained at the steering box and it holds the center part here from rotating. Cool, but you can't really do it unless your steering shaft is straight, which would be super difficult with the power steering and the rack and pinion. It's also pretty unsafe. If you get into a head-on collision, your steering wheel becomes a potato masher and your chest becomes a potato. But if I do a steering drop box, I can design it to have a pass-through. And then I can have a 3 8 inch rod go through the steering shaft and the steering wheel and hold the center cap stationary. I can add a little lever behind the stationary cap and on the back of the drop box, I can put an auto-canceling turn mechanism. So I can fix my steering column issue and add a cool turn signal to the middle of the steering wheel like the Jag originally had but this is perhaps a story for a later time. I really need to get this car running, and as much as I love unnecessary but cool things, I really should put it on the back burner. But maybe I'll just work on it a little bit. It used to be that you had to impress people to get people to watch your show. Now you just have to impress the algorithm. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. All hail the algorithm. <laughs>